mean, can you talk to us a little bit about your off-season work? I mean, being in the NBA Finals like you were last year is a huge accomplishment. Yeah. It's also, you know, motivation to go for it all this season. So, how are you better prepared to take that next step? Uh, honestly, this is my first real off-season because uh, normally we go overseas and we play. Uh, so, like the past three years, I've been in Italy during this time. But uh, kind of going into this past WNBA season, I told myself that I wasn't going to go overseas. And honest, I ended up getting, I ended up tearing my MCL uh, in the uh, semifinals. So I wouldn't have been able to go anyways. Um, so I've been rehabbing, uh, spent a lot of time with my family because that's something that women basketball players, I feel like don't get to do as much um, with just the way the seasons work. Um, so I really enjoyed my first off season, so to say. Um, spent a lot of time with my family and my daughter and kind of really just rest, rested and like took a break from basketball. Uh, but now like things are starting to get back going. So I'm back locked in, back working out and training to get ready for the season. What does the sixth woman of the year award mean to you personally? I mean, we all know basketball is a team sport. You know, it's all about roles and how well you can play them. But uh, yeah. Have you ever thought about, you know, what more you could do if you could start? I mean, you average said 13 points, seven rebounds off the bench, which is, you know, it's not a joke. It's, these are big numbers. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I mean, it's a role that I've kind of filled. Um, would I like to start? Maybe, but for this team and just because being a part of uh, the original, like San Antonio group, uh, it means a lot to me and for to see this team grow and kind of have the success we've had and like each year get better and better. Um, it, it means a lot to me. So I know people are kind of get. I think more people, people get more frustrated than I do about my role, but um, just the kind of per person I am and kind of player, I think um, it, it shows through that. At the podcast, you know, we are huge fans of Bill Lambert, the player. Can you talk to us a little bit about how he's as a coach? Is he, uh, a mellow down version of yeah. uh, bad boy uh, Bill Lambert. Yeah, he's t uh, he's like a tough teddy bear. Ball back, up back to Rodman, and then Lambert just takes him down. Uh, I think a lot of people that have had him in the past say now he's he's softer, but um, we've developed our relationship. Um, and once you get to know him, he really is like he he cares about us a lot and. He's probably one of the biggest voices inside of our league for us and like for players. Um, so yeah, once you get on his good side, like he's tough to like crack and to, to get to open up. But once he, like, cause I feel like he trusts me. So like once he trusts you, um, he'll do anything for you. So uh, I appreciate him. I appreciate where our relationship has gone to. And uh, yeah, he's, he's cool. He was dead four years at Day Forest. So do you do you think looking back now that that helped you become the sort of player that you are today? Oh yeah, I think. I mean, those. I mean, we weren't that good, but um, playing in that conference, um, like going against the competition that I went against night in and night out, and being able to perform the way I did, I, um, it helped make me better. Like I was going against some of the best players in the country, like every game. Like I was playing against Alyssa Thomas, Diamond Shields. Um, Natasha Howard was at Florida State. Um, Elizabeth Williams was at Duke. So I think being in that conference, um, that environment for sports uh, really helped develop me as a player. And then as far as a person, Wake Forest is one of the best schools in the country academically in America. Um, and so I think being a part of that kind of helped keep me like level headed and I appreciate it. I appreciate now looking back, but at the time it was kind of like, I felt like I was at too small of a school, but I think for me and like who I am, it, it helped. <laughs> Derica, uh, what's your, who's your favorite NBA player and your favorite WNBA player? And you know what, if you could borrow one of their uh, abilities, like our powers, so to speak, what would it be? Um, so for women's, I would say, I think I like um, I like Della Don, uh, and I think I would take her efficiency. I think uh, she's one of those players, or you could be a good def you could be a good defender, a great defender, and she will still find a way to do her move on you, and you will you'll know exactly what she's gonna do, but then she'll still score. Um, 
And I think that's what makes her special. She's so she's really, really efficient. Um, and on the men's side, for what I would like to have myself would probably just be the longevity that LeBron James has and how <laughs> he just doesn't seem to get hurt or phased by, you know, like anything with his body. And I know he invests a lot into it, but um, so that's probably, yeah, his longevity. Okay. And the uh, second part, I mean, what really excited you the most? I mean, you said that you have a daughter, so you have a rapport with kids, but uh, is there something else that you liked about the NBA junior program? Have you visited India before? or? Uh... I've done it just like in America, but I've never been to India. So I thought it was kind of cool and, you guys are you guys are cute like <laughs> but um no i've never been to india i played in south korea that's the closest mm -hmm. i guess i've been to india but um no it's somewhere i would like to go so mm -hmm. I, as and soon the, as they offered me to do it i didn't hesitate so okay and uh what why have any any thoughts on you know how this nba junior program can you know bring out more uh, opportunities for kids in india to maybe play one day in the wnba yeah, I mean, it sucks right now because of COVID. I can imagine, mm -hmm. though, that they have had ideas of being more involved or getting us out there, or getting people over here um, to kind of integrate it a little bit more. Um, I do think, in general, basketball is expanding, uh, so to say. Like, I know there are a lot of coaches now on a college level that recruit uh, in Europe. So yeah. I feel like at some point, India will, people will be going to bring in prospects or uh, basketball players from India to come to school in America. Mm -hmm. um, so. Any, I mean, last thoughts about what is it that they have to keep in mind when they come to the WNBA? Because in the NBA, when we ask players, they're like, the physicality is uh, totally mm -hmm. off the charts. It's not like anything that you've seen before. So is there something mm -hmm. you know, like that for the W? Um, I mean, even for the men's side, it's just, you know, there's not many, uh, there's not many job openings, so to say. Um, so it's like, you just have to take advantage of every opportunity you get. Cause mm -hmm. kind of with the, the way the league works, like once you're out, it's kind of hard to get back in. Right. Um, and cause there aren't many spots and a lot of us aren't leaving. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I would just say, you just take advantage of every opportunity. And usually it's about like situation and opportunity.